everybody. Tonight, we're going to be talking about credit scores revealed for our Let's Talk Money webinar series. I'm really excited to have everyone on with us. And um, again, just so you know, Kathy and Kamaya are in the chat. So if you have questions while we go through that I'm unable to answer, please put them in the chat for them and they can answer for us or answer your questions for me from them. So let me get started. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Stacia Grobenstetter. I'm a consumer economics educator, and you can find me in Grundy, Kankakee, and Will Counties. I saw Kamaya's face, face pop up, so I'm gonna let her introduce herself next. Hi, everyone. So happy to have you on. My name is Kamaya Walls Bichard. I am also a consumer economics educator, and I serve Livingston, McLean, and Woodford Counties. Kathy, Kathy. if you don't mind. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kathy Sweetler. Um, like everybody else, I'm uh, talking. I'm a consumer economics educator, but I'm down in Champaign, Ford, Iroquois, and Vermilion counties. And I'm looking forward to our credit discussion tonight. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Kamaya. So um, I have my wonderful colleagues again. They're going to be in the chat hanging out, you know, making sure they answer questions. But one of the things I wanted to kind of start with, um, you know, is that we do have money mentors that are available. So if you are somebody who's looking for some assistance in your credit or have credit questions, we do have money mentors available. Um, and we're putting that, that link in the chat, but it is available in these counties. If you live right outside one of these counties, give us, you know, shoot us an email, we can talk about it, but um, we do only take people who are in Illinois. So I just wanna make that clear. But our money mentors, again, are free. We like, and we usually try to meet with you one-on-one -on -one and we're probably, we're gonna, probably gonna meet with us online like this on Zoom. So just so you know. We have a packed hour. So I'm gonna try to get through all this information as best as we can. But these are kind of our learning objectives tonight. We're gonna know how to check your credit report for free. Hooray! We're gonna understand the components of a credit score and we're gonna know how to, you can manage or improve your credit report or score. So, um, before we get started, I'm gonna do a quick poll. I'm gonna do, um, just so one of the things that we do is we just wanna know who's on tonight. So I'm gonna launch this poll real quick. And just so we wanna to know what your age is, if you could answer and the poll just real quickly. I'll keep that going for just a few seconds and then I'll end it. Getting close, 78, 83%. And if you can't answer in the poll, just put it in the chat, but it's fine too. I'll give you guys about five more seconds. Okay, great. I'm gonna end the poll. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. I'm gonna close that out. But I also want to know when we get started, this is the perfect time to find the chat box. I'm gonna open up the chat. But we want to know when was the last time you checked your credit report? So we're not talking about credit scores here. We're talking about reports tonight. So I wanna know when was the last time you checked your credit report last week? Six months ago, 2020, last week, two to three months ago, two to three years ago, long time, a month ago, yesterday, last week, house closing, hooray, two weeks ago. So some differences, someone said yesterday, maybe because of this webinar, I don't know, but good, good chat, keep it going. And if you wanna put it in there, November, great. So, you know, we, that's what we're really going to be talking about tonight. A lot is about credit reports and scores and like all, all the info about them. So there are three main credit bureaus in the United States that collect financial information about us. And this reflects on how we manage our money and our credit. I want you to know that Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax are actually competitive business, businesses, and they don't share information. Um, so you could definitely have different information in each of the reports. TransUnion is the most commonly used here in the Midwest because they're housed in Chicago. Didn't know if you know that, kind of a uh, little side note tip. But um, again, they're competitive businesses. They may not share all the information. But one thing that you should know about them is that the information is updated regularly and it changes all the time. So once all the information is collected, these companies then put together a credit um, report that re represents your credit worthiness. And we'll talk more about that later. But I just want you to be aware that reports and scores, they're two entirely different entities. Um, and the laws that protect you are different for reports versus scores. Again, like we're gonna be talking a lot about credit reports for the next few slides. 
So some things that you should know about is that your credit report impacts a lot of different things. Lenders evaluate your credit report um, and your score, of course, but to determine if you sh they should give you credit, since besides paying debts is so closely re related to paying bills, um, creditors and lenders are now interested in these reports. So your report not only affects loans for purchasing a home or a car, but it affects things like renting an apartment, purchasing insurance, acquiring a phone, or even seeking legal or seeking employment in some states. It's not legal in Illinois for employers to use credit reports when hiring, except in some circumstances. So for example, like if you were becoming a bank teller and you were you know, handling money, that would be an exception. So all these things are impacted when we're talking about looking at our reports, um, our credit report. So just so we, one that you know, um, the one that always surprises me, um, one that surprised me when I used to be an insurance agent was insurance, but it does make sense because again, we're talking about, um, is it being closely related to paying bills? And if you are credit um, risky, then you know you might also not take care of your insurance or other things like that. One thing that you should know is that by federal law, you have a right to one free credit report a year from each of the credit bureaus. So again, those are Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. And you can, you can access your credit report through a website, which is annualcreditreport.com. And Kamaya should be putting that in the chat. But from this site, you'll be able to follow links to each of the credit bureaus to request your full credit report. Um, there are companies out there that offer free, free credit reports with the use of like credit monitoring or management services. And with all of them, your free credit report will eventually cost you money. Um, you have the legal right and responsibility to check your report annually. You do not have the legal right to do this with your credit score. This is one of the differences we kind of mentioned a little bit. Um, however, it's really important to note that for you, the, when you review your information, and we'll talk more about that here in a minute, but um, all, if you, when you look at the information on your credit report, that we worry about scores a lot, and we'll talk more about that, but that's because of the algorithms that credit scoring companies use. Um, but it's really important to make sure that the data in your credit report is accurate and correct because if you don't have an accurate credit report you'll have a poor credit score so um, the easiest way to do this is to check all three bureaus at once uh, on one site so you can the, there's multiple tactics to do here but the first one is if you haven't checked your credit report in a while like some of you said it's been maybe six um, a year two or three years i always tell people check it check them all once like today and then you can put on your calendar from a year from now to start doing every, you know, every quarter or so to check them. So just some quick little tips. Um, another question I get a lot is like, what is actually in my credit report? So that credit report is a record or profile of your credit history. So lenders use your credit report to learn how you've handled your obligations in the past. It helps them determine the risk of lending money to you. Businesses report um, information about you to credit reporting agencies or credit bureaus. So you're going to have personal, personal identification information, things like your name, your address, your date of birth, your social security number, and like where you're currently employed, possibly. Um, also, there's collection agency account information. So if you've ever been sent to collections, either, you know, whether it was on accident or that you paid the bill late, um, that will be there. And then other public information, things like bankruptcies, foreclosures, regular lawsuits, wage, gar uh, wage gar garnishments or attachments and liens. These are um, also on a credit report. So just some things to be aware of. And we're talking about what's inside of them. Just making sure I have all my notes. Yep, okay, great. Some other things that are also in a credit report that you should be aware of. Um, we, got, and we talked about a few of those. But um, different, there is credit account information and different companies have requested your file. So they're gonna be able to, you can see who has requested your information recently. So I always take, say this as a, um, companies are like peeking in the window to see if you are credit tolerant and if you can, if you can add more credit um, or um, credit to your accounts. Um, we also have, student loans that are on your credit report. And one thing to note with them is that defaulted student loans, 
stay on your credit report forever. Um, just something to be mindful of, especially if you know somebody who's maybe struggling with student loans or maybe in default um, to be aware of that it does show up on there. So another thing is that most negative information about credit reports stays on there for seven years, except for in when we're talking about bankruptcy and that usually stays on there for about 10 years. So whether it's a chapter seven bankruptcy or a chapter 13 bankruptcy, um, either way, it's gonna be on there for at least 10 years. So, but this, all this information is pulled on your credit report and you can check it, um, you know, again, once a year from each of the credit bureaus, but we'll talk more about that here in a little bit. <clears throat> now I kind of wanted to transition over to talking about credit scores. So credit scores, it's a, just a basically a number that summarizes your credit risk. It's based on a snapshot of time. So like today, um, your, your number could be different from today versus tomorrow versus next week. Um, and credit, credit scores are used instead of like using a manual score sheet. So again, we'll talk more about that in just a second. But I know that Kathy and Kamaya are probably tired about hearing, of hearing my apple pie analogy, but I have an apple pie analogy. So you can see here on this slide that there's a beautiful apple pie. And let's just pretend it has like beautiful lattice work and it looks delicious and amazing. But the thing is that in order to make the pie, we had to put all this work and ingredients into it, right? We had to make our dough, put it in um, the processor to get it going. We had to roll it out. We had to use our flour to make that happen. We had to cut our apples to do that. We put in sugar brown sugar, butter, and all of these things work together to make our beautiful apple pie. So that credit score at the end is the beautiful apple pie. It's just that number that we all want to have and see. But in order for us to have that beautiful apple pie or that beautiful credit score or that high credit score, I guess, is that we had to do a lot of work over a long period of time to get there. So this is my apple pie analogy. You'll never look at apple pies the same way again, but I hope that it reminds you that, yes, the number is important because we don't want a crummy apple pie, right? We don't want to, you know, accidentally have rotten apples or have um, salt instead of sugar added or accidentally overburn it or, um, you know, not even turn the oven on, but we just have to be mindful of, you know, like all the work that goes into a credit score. So, the one thing I really want to like stress to you is that we get really caught up in our credit score that we get kind of first start to forget about like the pieces that created it in the first place. So again, all those apples, all that flour, and this can be analogy can be used in any type of way. So like I was thinking about today, like maybe you don't like apple pie and that's okay. I was thinking about like, I, my mom used to make um, a very involved spaghetti sauce and uh, it took over like two and a half hours for it to cook down and it took a long time to make. Um, so anything that like really takes a long time to make, you know, with love and, you know, that's kind of how you want to review your credit score. Okay, whew. So let's talk a little bit about FICO scores. So um, we'll talk more about them here in a minute, but I just wanted to like let you know that FICO scores are what 90% what of most lenders use. Um, again, it's a three digit number. It's based on your, on your credit report, but I wanted to see if you guys knew what the FICO score range was. So in the chat, um, who's curious to know, like, what do you think this, the FICO score range is? Okay. First guess is zero to 850, 200 to 800, 350 to 800. 300 to 850, okay. Kathy says she's seen some to 900. Um, okay, we'll talk more about this in just a second. So thank you everybody who's chimed in, feel free to keep going. Um, but it is um, 300 to 850 for FICO scores specifically. So if you're wondering, oh, I didn't know that, I had no idea, it's 300 to 850, but there is, when we talk about FICO scores, there are different factors that contribute to our FICO score. So I'm just gonna do a quick poll. I wanna see, 
um, what you think the largest contributing factor to your FICO score is. Is it the length of your credit history? Is it new credit? Is it payment history? Is it amounts owed? Or are you just unsure? It's okay to be unsure, just be honest. Um, it's anonymous, so no one knows who you are when you answer. But we're about 50% the way voted. If you don't know, um, again, feel free to put unsure. And if you can't answer, put it in the chat, please. We'd love to hear from everyone. We're so close, almost there. Maybe about five more seconds. Okay, I'm gonna end the polling. We're so close. Okay, I'm gonna share the results. Um, if you answered payment history, you are right. Good job. Awesome, woohoo. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you and, um, and we'll talk more about that here in just a second. So thank you for answering my poll. So we talk about FICO scores. Again, it's just a number, it's a manual score sheet that's being used to um, you know, show other businesses what your credit worthiness is. So when we talk about what does this, this mix look like for FICO scores only, um, payment history makes up the largest amount of your FICO score. Things like late payments and bankruptcies hurt your score. Whereas having um, on-time payments will increase your score. That's good, right? Um, another one is a, um, the largest, the next largest is the total amount you owe on your accounts. So um, the number of accounts you have and how much available credit you are using influences your score. So your credit score will go down if you're more using more of your available credit. So think of it this way. Um, if you knew that your friend had already borrowed all the money that they could from their um, you know, their friends or spouses or credit cards, you might be really hesitant to lend more money to them because they already owe so much to other people and they can't borrow more. So you still might loan your friend money, but you might not loan as much to them. Um, the same can be true of lenders and credit card companies. You want to use 25, 20, we usually say 20 to 25% or less of your available credit for if you have a, for a higher credit score. Other small factors include things um, for your FICO score are things like your credit history, any new credit and the types of credit you use. Um, we'll talk more about canceling cards here in a little bit, but I just wanna like know, let you know that that's coming up. Um, and a lot of times when we talk about inquiries, inquiries um, do affect your score, and but we'll talk more that, about that here in just a minute as well. So this is kind of how a FICO score is made up, 65% is made up of payment history and how much you owe. So that's a large chunk. So another thing is that um, not all scores are used the same and different companies produce different scores. So I, again, FICO score is the most used. Uh, it's the most frequently used by lenders. The, um, that's that's kind of what we look at. There is an algorithm that has, there's all different types of different FICO algorithms. Um, the most recent one is actually FICO 9, but FICO 8 um, has some interesting things, um, includes paid off collection accounts, excludes some data from reoccurring payments, and allows 45 days for you to shop around, which is really nice. Um, so another, the other credit scoring system that is out there are Vantage scores. And Vantage scores are typically free scores. So if you are a user of Credit Karma, you're going to see Vantage scores being used. This was developed jointly by Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian in 2006. Um, so it's just something to be mindful of when you're looking at the scores, because you might be looking at a Vantage score, and it may be significantly different from your FICO score. So we're getting to this point. I'm going to ask you some poll questions, because um, I'm excited about them. But I want to know if you know about some credit myths. So I'm going to have you answer in the polls. It's completely anonymous. So again, if you're unsure, it's okay. Put unsure. We want you to be honest. We want to see what you know. Um, stop. Oh, let me get the questions. So sorry. So the first one. The first one is, um, is it true or false that looking at my credit report brings my score down? What do you guys think? I'll take a sip of water.
Got 10 more people to go. So close. I'm going to give you about five more seconds. Find it. If you can, can't find it in the poll, put it in the chat. Okay. Three, two, one. Okay. And pulling. If you answer false, you are correct. Looking at your credit report does not bring your score down. Um, a lot of people have this misconception that when you look at your credit report, it brings that score down and that is absolutely 100% false. You can look at your report um, if you pay for it, you know, but again, that yearly, um, but people look at on their uh, report all the time on Credit Karma, things like that. So looking at your credit report does not bring your score down. So thank you. The next poll I have up, do you think that closing your credit card I already have increases my score. So there's a yes, no, or it depends. <clears throat> Most of you have answered. I'm gonna give you about five more seconds. Okay, last, last call, last call, okay. I'm going to share the results. If you answer it, it depends. You are correct. Um, your part of your score is based on the amount of debt you have compared to your total credit limit, which is re referred to as your credit utilization ratio. So that's what we were talking about earlier about, um, you know, lending to your friend who's already kind of maxed out. Um, you know, this is something to be aware of. But since we learned earlier that your credit report changes frequently, your credit utilization can impact your score differently depending on where you put your report, where their, your report and scores are pulled. Um, so sometimes people get nervous about closing a card, um, but it really depends on what your particular credit history looks like. So I closed, a, I actually closed my most, my longest card. And I really didn't see much of a difference, but for other people it could. So it really just depends on kind of what your particular history looks like. Okay. Let's go to myth number three. Does too, having too many hard inquiries bring my credit score down? Is it true or false? And if you're unsure, again, it's okay. Be honest, just say unsure. Mostly everyone has voted. Give you just one more second, about five more seconds. We have a lot more unsures, that's time, that's okay. But this is actually true. Having too many hard inquiries can bring your score down. So um, the way I explain hard inquiries is that, you know, in order for you to have a hard inquiry, you have to sign for it, okay? You have to be the one that says, yes, I want this, this credit and I'm going to ask for it, whether it's a loan, credit card, um, you whatever it is, you name it. If you must sign for it in some particular way, that's how a hard inquiry happens. So um, having too many over, you know, not only for a longer period of time is gonna hurt your credit, but if you're looking at, you know, doing a two week shopping window, of, you know, you're looking for a new car, you're looking for the best rate, and you shop around, that won't be as harmful as if you were like, okay, today I'm going to shop for rates, and then two weeks from now I'm going to shop for rates, and then, excuse me, and then like three weeks from now I'm going to shop again. So good, good things to know. So, and then I have one last credit myth. Okay, is carrying a balance good for your credit score? I just love seeing these come in and get really excited about it. So. There's lots of ventures, that's okay. I'll give you guys about five more seconds. This one came in a lot faster. You guys are getting better at polls. It's great. Okay, I'm gonna end the poll and share the results. And carrying a balance is not good for your credit score. Um, we, we talked about a little bit earlier about credit utilization and seeing how much credit, how much of our available credit is being used. Um, lenders really want to see that lower amount. Um, so, you know, keeping it, whether it's 
it's under 20, usually under 20% is what we, we talk about. When we're talking about keeping our balances under a certain dollar or under a certain percentage. So thank you all for participating in my polls. I really appreciated that. I was gonna stop sharing results. It's kind of fun. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Kathy and I'm gonna take a little break so I can catch my breath. And I'm gonna let Kathy talk about um, errors on credit reports. All right, thank you, um, Seisha. And um, boy, lots of stuff going on in the chat. People are asking great questions. Some I know the answers to, some I'm not so positive. So I'm doing the best I can there. Okay, so let's talk about this errors on my credit report, because what we know is that most everybody, especially if you've not ever looked at your credit report before, will have errors on it. And those errors tend to not help us. I haven't heard too much about good errors. And, and so they can really affect our credit score. So focusing on getting those corrected is really important. So you're probably asking yourself, what kinds of errors would we have and why? Well, remember, a lot of data is flowing in terms of things being reported all the time. And that's often can be um, different kinds of things that go show up. All right. Next slide, please, Seisha. All right. So let's just take a look at some of the different um, errors that you might want to really pay attention to when you check your credit reports. And one thing I just want to emphasize now, too, is that the three different companies, FI, um, not FICO, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, these are separate businesses, and they don't share information with each other. So you could have an error in one company's report but not in another company's. And so it's very important when you go to annualcreditreport.com to check your um, reports that you check all three. Um, at some point in time, you need to check them all because you, again, to really make sure there's no errors. So sometimes the errors are sort of simple things like just identity things like social security numbers have been entered wrong somewhere and somebody else's data shows up on yours. Um, sometimes if you have a name very similar to somebody else, like you're a junior, then you might see that pop in. So first off, check that your name is accurate and that they've got the basic identity information right, because that really matters. Um, and then you just also want to, you know, kind of read over it and make sure that all the different account information is accurate. You're looking to make sure that if um, you've closed an account, it shows that it's closed, that, you know, you've got your payments information looks accurate. There's also a good place to make sure that there aren't any accounts listed that you don't recognize. So one of the advantages of checking your credit report is it's one of our best ways of finding out about identity theft. And I know we're going to talk about that a little bit more coming up, but I just want to mention here when you're looking at the accounts, pay attention that all the accounts are yours. Um, so you're also going to be just kind of also checking over for any kind of weird entry information. Sometimes you might find out of date information. So most um, data should just roll. Most bad data should just roll out or it doesn't really get taken into consideration in your scores, um, you know, after seven years. So those kinds of things are the kinds of things that you want to um, take, take, really take, pay attention to. You also just want to make sure that, you know, when we're talking about like accounts being closed and things, for example, um, twice in my life, one of the bureaus has shown that I've had two mortgages open and somehow they didn't get the information that we had, you know, paid off, closed out one mortgage before we opened another one. So those can make your credit profile look very different if it looks like you owe on two homes instead of one. So that's another example of making sure that your account information is accurate. It's not always about credit cards. All right, next slide, please. All right, so what do you do if you find mistakes? All right, one of the things that I love about checking them online um, is that often right there, if there's something that you dispute, like you see your name is wrong or something, there's a little box you can check and you can put in the dispute right 
in with the credit report right then and there and file it. So the kinds of, you know, you're going to want to first step is typically to dispute it with a particular credit reporting company, whether you do it um, online, whether you send them, um, you know, mail one way or the other. Sometimes you might have to send them um, documentation, but they'll let you know if you need that. For example, when I had those home mortgages open, I just sent a copy. And you always want to send a copy, not your original, but sent a copy of the actual closing paper that showed that I no longer had that mortgage. Um, sometimes uh, when you do dispute it, they'll come back and say, well, we checked with the company and they think that this is accurate. So then you need to go back and dispute the error with the company. So that if you have a, a problem with this, there is a time frame that everybody has to fall into to reply back to you. But typically, we don't really hear a lot of complaints about the time frame or people not referring back um, properly. So you just need to work through the process. It is really important though, just like with anything else, um, to document your conversations, your emails, any paperwork you send, so you can stay on top of it and make sure that those errors are fixed. Okay, next slide, please. All right, one other thing we really wanted to um, bring up to you is let's say you do go to take out um, an auto loan and you're, the lender denies it to you because of your credit report. This is a situation when then you are then legally entitled to a copy of your free credit report. So, but in this situation, the lender will tell you, okay, it was, you know, this credit bureau, for example, TransUnion that I looked at. And, then you don't go to the annualcreditreport.com website, you go straight to TransUnion and ask for a copy of the free credit report. You should get a letter that gives you all that information um, if you are denied credit. Also, if you are unemployed and looking for a job, you can also get a free credit report. So that's something else to keep in mind. And let's see what the next slide has for us. So we've been talking about checking your credit at le reports at least once a year because you get one free. But with the pandemic, everything's a little different. And right now, the credit bureaus are offering um, a free credit report through um, April 2021. And so if you haven't checked your credit report re um, recently, then you really need to do that now. Um, and so that is really my... Um, um, my recommendation to you. And so um, go ahead and find out about, um, make sure that you do that at this point in time. All right, we're not really sure if this is going to be extended. And I don't really think everybody needs to check it every week. But you do want to um, think about, uh, you know, getting it done now if you can. All right. Going back to heading this back over to Seisha. Thanks, Kathy. Um, so I thank you for doing all that. Um, gave me a good little break. Um, so that was nice. But I want to let you know that, you know, one of the best ways when we're talking about credit um, is definitely um, identity theft can occur and happen. Um, but with but checking your credit is one of the best ways to kind of combat this. Um, so again, you know, we kind of talked about that you can check it once a year, but you know, that's, and that's important to know, but an identity theft happens when someone is trying to use your name, your social security number, your bank account, or even your credit card number. Um, so this is a good way to kind of avoid fraud again, to check it. If you do find that, um, you know, you are a victim of fraud or something, you know, other than something isn't right, like Kathy was talking about, I think it's important to maybe start looking at free credit freezes and credit freezes are now free. Thank you so much um, from the federal government for fixing that. But I think it's important to just note uh, how important it is uh, just to be mindful of when we're looking at your credit report and score um, what that looks like. So. <clears throat> so next up, we're going to talk a little bit about some ways to fix your credit. Um, and we're gonna go through it pretty quickly, but I just do want people to be mindful of, um, you know, credit is personal to everyone. And we just wanna be mindful of that as well. So, 
Um, so the first way to, you know, fix your credit is to pay your bills on time. Um, this is one of the most, one of the fastest ways to increase your credit score, which again, people really care about the score, but also, you know, make sure that, um, you know, we, we want to have lenders look at us as that we, we can pay on time. So paying your bills on time, um, paying, you know, whether that's the minimum payment or a little bit more, that's the most important piece of this. Again, we looked at that FICO score earlier and, um, you know, payment history is one of the largest portions of it. We want to definitely make sure that we are mindful of that. We also want to talk about um, when we're talking about fixing our credit, um, that keeping balances low on cards and other revolving debt is important as well. So we kind of talked about that a little bit earlier with that 20% um, credit utilization ratio or rate as they call it sometimes. Um, we want to definitely look at keeping the balances low on our cards. We want to use them. There was a question earlier in the chat that I answered, but we want to be mindful of um, just making sure that we don't, you know, if the limit's $100, we don't want to be up there at $99 right up at the top of it. So keeping those balance low, balances low will help us do that. Another one um, is to pay off debt rather than moving it around. Um, so sometimes, you know, you can get credit card offers for 0% financing or 0% interest. Um, and basically, you know, you're just moving the debt around. Um, so the credit utilization is still going to look the same no matter what. Uh, you're just moving it. Um, so just be mindful of it. You know, for some people, those kind of strategies work, like moving the debt over from, you know, a higher interest rate card to a lower interest rate card. So that way you're not paying so much interest back um, or even moving it to a personal loan or other things like that. But, you know, we just want to be mindful of like, we don't want to like move it to another card and then use that, that other card and, and, and rise it up. So another thing is that when we shop around, we really want people to shop around for the best rates on loans, especially in this focused period of time. So um, as you saw with um, the earlier slide about FICO versus Vantage scores that they give you a 45 day window. I really suggest that if you're looking to shop around for rates, um, whether it's a mortgage, auto loan, or even just looking for like a new credit card that you, you do that in a focused period of time, mostly mortgages and car loans, but you know, do that within like a two week period. You know, you can call, you know, your bank tomorrow and call, um, you know, a mortgage broker in the afternoon, and then you could look online and they, you know, the next day, just to kind of see what's the best rate for you. Um, again, two week window is probably the best for you. So if you are looking, you know, to refinance that mortgage or refinance a car loan, those are, that's, that's the best time. So, um, and, and another, just like quick tip, um, at least try at least three people to see what the, a good rate would be. A lot of people just usually go with the first one that they that they ask for. So another one, um, this is another thing that I think people think about. So we talked about closing on, you know, cards, um, but people usually close them as a short-term strategies to raise their, their scores. And sometimes this can backfire. Um, I think it really just depends on, again, what your credit looks like, but I just wanted people to know like this isn't really a strategy like to, to close the card. If you're going to close the card, just close it and be mindful of it. Just like, don't use it. If you don't use it anymore, just be done with it. Um, especially, if, you know, we talked about, we, earlier we talked about, you know, the longest card that you had. This is just, you know, unused cards. And sometimes um, banks or other lenders will just close cards because you're not using them anymore. Like I used to have a very fancy credit card at a nice, um, clothing boutique in the mall and you know that card was closed because I never I stopped using it so the lender did it on my behalf but again this is not a strategy to raise your score I just want to be like very mindful of that okay so as we're going forward one thing that can really help we're talking about you know looking at raising credit scores or re-establishing history is a secured credit card um, again this is a, 
a tool in the toolbox of credit. Um, so it requires you to open and maintain technically kind of like a savings account as security for your line of credit. Um, often an unsecured credit card doesn't. So you might be more um, knowledgeable about unsecured cards, but this is a secured card. So if I deposit $500 or send $500 to this lender, that's my credit limit. That's what I'm being, I'm using. Um, sometimes, but not often the money might earn interest, but that's pretty rare. Um, but just something to kind of be aware, to be aware of if you are looking at a secured card. Um, the required savings deposit for a secured card may be a few hundred dollars to even several thousand dollars. And your credit line is a percentage of your deposit, typically 50 to 100%. You may also have to pay an application and processing fees. So that's just something to be mindful of as well. Um, and before applying for a secure credit card, be sure to ask like what the total fees are and if they are refunded if you're denied a card. Typically a secured card requires an annual fee and has a higher interest rate than a secured card. Um, of course, all secured cards are not the same. You need to ask questions you know, about like, what's the interest rate? What are my fees gonna be charged? What's the grace period? Um, those kind of questions need to be answered before you decide. But this is a card, again, to help you build credit or reestablish credit history. Because we do have a lot of people who um, maybe have never used a credit card before or are maybe to, looking to reestablish as well. Another tool that's out there is called a secured personal loan. And sometimes these are called credit builder loans. Um, you secure a loan with your savings, and then you start to build your credit history. So you might walk into a bank or a credit union and apply for something like this. You secure that loan with, you know, whatever savings you may have, and then you just slowly pay it um, to pay it back. So it's just another another tool in the toolbox out there for those individuals who are kind of struggling with their credit. Another thing that I think is important to talk about is like. There are costs to avoid credit. I tell people that if they wanna play the credit game, they have to play the credit way. Um, we hear lots of things about negatively associating with credit, um, but we live, we happen to live in a society where it's really hard, it's really difficult or even impossible for us to get access to opportunities that can improve our financial well-being. We don't have a credit history or a poor credit score. Um, one thing you should know is that nearly one in five consumers have no credit history or credit score, according to the Corporation for Enterprise Development. Um, and we call these people either credit, we call them a credit invisible. Um, so it's just something to be aware of that these people do exist and they are very credit adverse. That's okay. Another thing you should know is that credit affects our costs. So um, if you have some subprime credit, so if you have poor credit, if you have a low credit score or no credit, could it impact your ability to get a mortgage or even the cost of a home loan? It could definitely also impact the cost of an auto loan or your ability to even qualify for one. Something you might not think about is the fact that you have, um, if you have no credit card or no credit, it could drive up your insurance rates like we talked about earlier. Again, people look at your credit history because it's so, similar to paying bills on time. So they wanna know that you know aren't credit risk, that you are not a credit risk to them. And that's why people look at credit scores and insurance scoring. Um, obviously having a no, no credit score or a low credit score can impact your ability again to get a credit card, which then again impacts things like travel, which we're not doing right now, but if you, but if you were, you know, making hotel reservations and purchasing air play tickets. So sorry. Um, so just some things to be mindful of, you are kind of struggling with some bad credit history or repairing it, um, is that you definitely can, you know, repair credit, your credit history. Uh, it just, it's going to take a little bit of time. It's going to take a little while, you know, um, we talked about the apple pie earlier and like all the ingredients and all the time that goes into making something like that. Well, if you have bad credit, you know, it ha didn't happen overnight, uh, unfortunately. It happened over a period of time. Um, you made choices, whether they were, you know, your choices or the things happened. Um, 
but it's going to take time to repair it. So just be mindful of that. You know, people want to, sometimes people really are looking for that quick fix. And I'm here to tell you that that is not the case when we're talking about credit and credit history. Um, of, of course, I think it's important to address debt that you have. So if you are being called by like a debt collector or um, another person like that, you know, to be mindful of those things and to do address those. Um, and of course, you know, we talked about that payment history being the largest portion of the FICO score and one of the key things in increasing your credit score. So just making payments on time on existing debts is really important. Um, you know, we want, we want to help you do that as well. So um, one thing I just want to talk about with when we talk about collections or collection agencies is that if you're unsure the debt is yours, you can always call and talk to the, the collection agency and ask for approval of the debt. So whether they call you or send a letter or do both because there's required by law to do both, you wanna make sure that that debt is yours as well. Um, another thing is, you know, Kathy talked a little bit about those errors. Um, those errors can, once they're removed, can increase your score as well. So that is something to be mindful of like why we look at credit reports. And again, why I emphasize that the, the ingredients that go into your apple pie are just as important as the apple pie. Um, so just some other things to be thinking about when we're talking about looking at repairing bad credit. Kamaya is gonna throw this um, YouTube link in the chat, but you know we do have a really great webinar that we call um, with our colleagues um, and that we worked on together. It's called Establishing Healthy Credit. So if that's something that you're interested in, please feel free to check that out in the chat. Again, we will be sending all of the links um, with the recording, typically Fridays, we try to send it out, but Monday is usually the latest. So be watchful in your email for that. Another thing is like, if you're looking to learn more about consumer economics from the consumer economics team from me and Kathy and Kamaya, you can find a list of our resources there, uh, including our blog, our money mentors, our podcast, which I'll talk about in just a quick second. And then our other webinar series that's going on called Get Savvy, Grow Your Green Stuff. Our next webinar for Get Savvy is actually next Wednesday, so March 10th. And we're gonna be talking about investing basics around noon. So before you guys go, I'm gonna do one last um, poll. We just ask that you um, please respond. This is one of the ways that we, um, you know, knowing what your gender and race is is part of our federal funding. And so I just do have to ask for that. Um, you, need, you do need to scroll to answer all three questions. Um, if you prefer not to respond, that's okay too. Just put that, you know, do not prefer not to respond. So, and I won't be sharing these results. So just so you know. Quickly, um, we do have a podcast. So if that's something that interests you and you really like listening to me and Kathy and Kamaya, um, you can find that on SoundCloud or iTunes or even Google Play or wherever you find your podcasts. That's where you can find that information from us. So, and then last but not least, you know, if you enjoyed this webinar, you felt like you, know, you got your questions answered. I see lots of things going on in the chat. I can't read them yet, but please give us your feedback. We love hearing from you. We want to know like what you think about you know, the webinar, what we can improve, what you had questions about, um, all of that. So I'm gonna do another like 10 seconds for the, for the polls and uh, I'll close those up. If there are, I'm gonna ask for questions. I'm gonna ask Kathy to, um, if there are any questions that, you know, I can answer before we end the chat, please let me know um, and we can talk about them, but. Um, are credit scores any different for new immigrants? This is a question I don't know that I necessarily so know. I, I can tackle to. this one yeah, okay. a little So with like um, new immigrants coming into the country, if you're establishing credit for like the first time, um, you might fall into like that category of the credit invisible because you don't have necessarily a built up credit history. Um, I am from an immigrant family and a lot of my family has... Um, gone the route of, you know, trying to build from scratch, even if they come here in their 40s, like trying to, to build up their credit 
um, through owning maybe a secured credit card or if they qualify um, for an unsecured credit card, also through like different ownerships and things like that, uh, maybe becoming an authorized user on somebody or another family member's card. So just different ways in how they're trying to build up that credit. Um, so they might not have like an established credit. And so um, for a lot of folks, lots of family, it's um, kind of like starting um, from scratch to build that up. Kathy, did you have something to add? I thought I saw you on mic. Um, no, I didn't have too much to add. I think you covered that. You can, um, when, I have been told by people at Experian that if you, um, for example, are an international student and you have a credit card from here, from the United States, and you um, are using it, that you can build up a credit history. It can be difficult though to access it online and you may want to do it by um, sending in the form by mail and that you'll have a better, if you don't have a social security number, you'll have a better chance of finding it that way. Mm -hmm.